Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex, your host. Today is December 17. It's a Saturday. December 17, 2022. And this podcast has really been just a form of uh, therapy for myself. It's cathartic in a sense to be able to impart my experience and share it freely for free to you. These are 30 minute consults that you wouldn't really get anywhere else from somebody who's been in the game and been around others who've been in the game longer than I have. The game being corporate, the corporate world engaged in a corporate war. The sooner you know that, the better. After all, you're born into this thing called life and you won't get anywhere if you don't put in the work. Today's question comes from, uh, not, not so much a question. There's no question mark on this, but still we'll treat it as a consult. They got to have a question that needs answering. And getting it from Reddit, a lot of these folks typically hit Reddit up with not the best of context, but we'll go off what they give us. And throughout the consult, I'll go back and forth and share what I believe would be the best approach, what I think would be a good approach in uh, relation to our original posters, our OP's professional development. The title of this one says, Hard Work is Getting Me Nowhere. Ah, that's scary. Hard work is getting you nowhere? Really? Well, work smarter. Not hard. <laughs> the body. The body says, long story short, I'm the type of person who is super diligent about the details and quality of my work. I honestly think that my boss has no clue how much work I put into creating the projects that I do, which is what's killing me. I have colleagues who are in positions above me whose work is riddled with errors, late and not nearly as detailed as my own. I'm starting to get super frustrated that my hard work is overlooked and taken for granted. Is this just how things are in the corporate world? You just put in the years in the industry, kiss some butt, and that's all it takes to move up? Does the work really not matter? And they say, sorry for any grammar slash spelling errors. I just wrapped up a 12-hour day. Well, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for errors. If you're super diligent, you could fucking super spell check. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't notice anything in there. And I wasn't reading. I wasn't reading to proofread or edit or revise. So... I got nothing I got nothing to say in that regard. What I will say though is is hard work and only hard work doesn't get you promotions. It's not it's sufficient. It's sufficient to get you a promotion, but it's not even necessary. Surprisingly, it's not even necessary. Because your definition of hard work might not be somebody else's. I joked a little bit in the beginning about working smarter. Now, working smarter could equate to getting the same amount of work done than if you had been putting in those 12 hours. If you get it done in 10 hours, you're working smarter. If you get it done in eight hours, you're working smarter. Are you necessarily working harder? You see, you've got to ask yourself, I don't know how socially adept you are to marketing yourself, promoting yourself and your hard work. At the same time, It could be that you've established yourself 
that you've kind of cemented this reputation for being a hard worker and staying in line, which could reflect poorly on you if you now decide to start biting at the, what's the term called? Nipping at the bit, biting at the bit, chomping on the bit. That's right. You're like a workhorse. That's what you signed up for. You have people who are above you. You have colleagues who are in positions above you already, which tells me that you are in a support role, some type of subordinate position. Nothing wrong with that, but it's what you signed up for. How much hard work you put into it really only dictates how valuable you are to the company, not how much the company values you. You've got to put yourself in the company's shoes, in the supervisor's shoes. They don't value you for, I don't know, humanity's sake. They put a value on you for your productivity. Now, you can branch out from that by becoming more social, by developing yourself professionally, learning to network. That's going to require you learning the hierarchy because it sounds, to me, it sounds like you've got a pretty... uh, pretty diverse organizational structure. If you have multiple colleagues in positions above you, yeah, you've got a couple extra rungs on that ladder that you can explore and probably not get called out for. You keep your work product the same, you could potentially scale it back, right? I don't know. I don't know what the requirements, what the technical requirements are so that your diligence doesn't need super diligence, right? Because to me, that's just an extra adjective, super diligent. Okay. You could just be diligent and still not make errors. If your colleagues above you are making errors, they are just not diligent. They are not less diligent. They're just not diligent. There's there's a difference between being diligent and not diligent. Saying you're super diligent and focusing on details could mean that you're taking too much fucking time. That you are hyper-focusing on this one thing that doesn't require... The excessive energy, the excess energy that you're putting into it. Let it go. Do something better with your time. That better being networking, moving up, not kissing ass. I mean, I get that kissing ass might get you places. It might put you in view of certain doors, but kissing ass won't always open doors for you. Why the fuck would a competent manager, a leader, want someone who just kisses their ass, but aren't productive? What that picture is missing is you, a diligent worker, a productive worker, creative, maybe, I don't know. Because you're not working smart, you're working hard by your own words, by your own admission. Could you be doing better? Always, always. But why would a competent leader want just a yes man, an ass kisser, who doesn't bring that much more value to the company? They just haven't come across you yet. They haven't met you yet. My suggestion is learn how to navigate the office. 
investigate what others in the office do. Perform a little reconnaissance, if you will. This is corporate war, after all. Find which positions you could see yourself doing, which positions you might be able to do better. All that excess energy that you were pouring into diligence might not even be required. You want to move up, you find a way to move up. I don't know if you're, if you have rocked the boat, if you are chomping at the bit now to even get promoted again, that context isn't included for us, but I would ask those questions in a one-to-one. If you're in a spot where you feel, you perceive like you're trapped, you have no way up. First question that comes to my mind is, what have you done to move up? Do people know you want to move up? Do you know what it takes to move up? If they moved you up tomorrow, how long would you last? (laughs) Now, you could wait until they approach you and said, hey, Alex, you know what? We think it's time. You've been in this position a long time. And now, after some time, we would like to take the time to train you so that with a little time, we can promote you and you can be in a new position for some more time. (laughs) Now, I said time like seven, 10 times in that, in that statement there, because I want to drive home the point that if you wait for something, yeah, it'll get to you, but in time with the passage of time. And that might be time that you don't have. That might be time that you're sitting there in your current position, festering with the idea that Ugh, I'm super diligent and I don't make any errors. And all these other people get promoted because they kiss ass. What the fuck are you doing to reach out to the higher ups and let them know that you fucking exist? Let them know that you can do better than where you are right now. You say you're a hard worker. You're pulling 12 hour shifts. Are the people above you pulling 12 hour shifts? <laughs> Ask yourself why or why not. You have to learn how to communicate effectively. And it may be that you're jaded. It may be that you're feeling a little salty with the fact that folks get promoted. Folks are getting promoted around you. And you don't see a way out of the position that you're in. You might have become too dependable in your spot. That it might not benefit the manager, the supervisor to train you, to move you out. They say, well, Alex is super diligent and he doesn't complain. He hasn't said shit to me so far, so I'm going to keep him there. For some time. <laughs> what the fuck do you expect? If if you don't let them know that you're ready to go, what, they're just supposed to read your mind and say, yeah, I mean, Alex doesn't really do shit. I don't know anything about him. I don't know what his motives are. He's got good work ethic. He's got great work ethic. He's got super diligent work ethic, but he doesn't know much else. At least, I don't know what the fuck he knows, so I'm going to keep him in this spot because he checks all the boxes for productivity, no complaints. I don't even, I don't even know when the last time I gave him a raise was, but he hasn't complained. <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you to wake the fuck up. Take the initiative. Take that super diligence of yours and do, perform, perform the due diligence to get promoted. Start asking questions. Start investigating on your own. Learn what it takes to move up. So that way when 
I don't know why I don't know why it sounds cinematic. I don't know why I make this shit out to be like a movie, but it is. Next time you catch one of your managers in passing, or next time you catch one of your higher up colleagues in passing, catch that motherfucker lacking. Put them in a position that makes them question their competency and has them recognize your own. Don't embarrass them. Don't berate them. Don't denigrate them, right? Don't make them feel bad, right? Make them question if they're doing enough for the company and whether they're suited for their position. If all they do is kiss ass and jerk the, the, jerk the boss off, ask them if, have them question whether that's enough, whether it, what they are doing is worth anything. They're not a, a super top performer, super diligent worker, hard worker like Alex. What, what am I doing with my life? Have them think that. Don't outright accuse them. You're on the same team. You're in the same company. But even within the same company, you can introduce that, that level of competition between friendly and just business. It, sure, it's always personal. It should be personal, but it's still business at the end of the day. You have to have them, you have to make them recognize you. They're not just going to take time out of their day, out of their precious day, kissing ass to notice you. They don't give a fuck. They couldn't give two shits about Alex and his struggles with perfectionism. Nobody gives a shit. Sometimes you just got to get the work done, submitted. If it's good enough, it flies. If it flies, it's good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect. You might be taking too much. You might be taking too much time. Where if you followed up with your manager, with your supervisor, and you had a performance review, they could say, they might say, you are taking too much time on these projects that we assign you. What the fuck are you doing? When other colleagues around you at your level or higher are tackling larger projects in less time. What what are you doing wrong? They could take super diligent as something wrong. But that's up to you to learn. Investigate what the culture is like. Learn to navigate it. Sure, that implies getting a little dirty with the office politics. But you don't have to come away from it dirty. You don't have to taint your opportunities at promotion, taint your opportunities at an increase in salary. It doesn't have to be that way. Just know, just know that if you want to get ahead, you want to move up, get promoted, make better money, better compensation, if you want more benefit, out of corporate and out of life, you have to become assertive. Not aggressive, necessarily, no. Not yet, at least. Aggress- aggressiveness is a last resort, let's say. But you have to learn how to become assertive. You have to learn to be assertive. How to communicate effectively. To get what you want. Like a consummate professional. I say this every episode. And I like repeating it, not necessarily repeating it. I like reiterating it because it's the common theme that strings through that, uh, that strings the podcast together every episode, every season. It's thinking like a corporate cowboy, thinking like an independent professional, self-sufficient and self-maintained. Let's take a look at some of these comments. Hmm. Some of these folks are saying, well, ah, the first one saying, <laughs> it's time to learn to manage office politics. I mean, 
I wouldn't go about managing office politics just yet. Maybe you want to learn the ins and the outs, which is why I said start with the hierarchy. It sounds like you have plenty of colleagues around you at the same level, at the same position, and higher. So you've got a couple of rungs to explore before you hit somebody of substance, right? Sure, they all could sink you, but you're not on anybody's shit list yet, are you? You see, these are conversations that I would have with the client if I had them before me on a one-to-one, which if you would like to schedule one, or if you know somebody who's in a position and appears like they're stuck in a rut, would like a professional opinion, a second opinion, uh, another look at their position in life, in their career, reach out to us, DM us. You can find us on Instagram. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z at the end. Corporate Cowboys with a Z. On Patreon, that's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. You can shoot us a donation if you would like. It goes towards business expenses and legal fees for the podcast. There's a Venmo, PayPal, uh, what is it? a cash app also. You can find it. You're a smart cookie. We'll add a Bitcoin wallet shortly. Some kind of electronic exchange. I don't know. We'll see. I'm more of a cash type of person. I do enjoy material exchange. So if you'd like to send a letter with an attachment, a physical attachment, that's P.O. Box 3372. Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. Office politics should be maybe step two or step three. To first investigating what the hierarchy looks like, how it operates, because again, we don't know, we don't have this context from the OP. What they do for the company, how long they've been at the company, what the company even does what the different people, the colleagues, what they do in relation to OP's project over here, the one that he's, the one that they've been super diligent on. (laughs) We don't fucking know. OP might just be some type of technical support, some type of auxiliary support role. And now they're in their fucking feelings about having carried the project when in reality they contributed Minimally. (laughs) It's like having to put a slide deck together and OP did their one section and maybe they got like no spelling errors in there. And the project was for a million dollar contract. And OP's was just like a little auxiliary like side note, like two slides, two slides out of a 20 slide deck which is what 10 percent and their belief is that they need that that they deserve a third a third of the contract the fuck out of here get the (laughs) fuck again i'm just saying i'm i'm just i'm just uh what's the what's the term what's the term i'm being facetious here i'm i'm exaggerating some for effect But the first step should be learning the organizational structure. The second step should be learning the requirements for the next position up from yours or from the next, from the second position up from yours. Shit. Maybe you skip one. I've been there. You have to, sometimes you have, you have to boss up and learn what it takes. Learn, learn the requirements for the next position up from yours and the next position up from that. You set yourself apart enough and they'll recognize you and find, dude, Alex is about his business. Alex is with the shit. Alex is killing the game. I don't even have to approach Alex about whether or not they want a promotion. Alex fucking approached us asking what it takes to be moved two spots up 
It looks like Alex is hungry. <laughs> I'm sure you can find a more a more toned down way of having that fit within your life. But as a corporate cowboy, you have to be thinking like that. In reality, actually, you have to be moving with diplomacy like a professional, a consummate professional always. The second comment here says, um, oh, wait, look, OP actually replied to that time to learn about office uh, politics, time to learn Time to learn how to manage office politics. And OP responds saying, I know you're right, but I'm super annoyed that my work can't just stand on its own. <laughs> what the fuck? It says, I have no patience for politics. And I think I just have to come to terms with the fact that my career progress will likely be stunted by that. Then, my friend, your career will be stunted. And we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Maybe, okay, so maybe the first commenter, right? Because the first commenter, I think, kind of put things out of order for the OP by just bringing up office politics. Office politics, I said, is step two or step three. I mean, it's definitely not step one. If you don't know what the fuck you're working with, if you have not performed the recon, have not done reconnaissance, don't know what you're walking into, just trying to pull strings and pull levers out of nowhere, asking for favors and 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 getting into uh, social debt with others is not going to go well with you, especially if you don't know who butters, who's bread, and who greases, whose wheels, right? And I don't mean personally. I mean organizationally. If you don't know the ins and outs of the organization, how it operates, you're operating, you will be operating at a loss. Don't fucking do it. Don't dive headfirst into politics when politics is literally just the fucking, um, when the, if the politics that you haven't seen, if the politics are just a pit of broken glass and needles, don't go jumping into it. Learn, learning how to fucking manage it. Get the fuck out of here. Learn, learn your position first, right? And then learn about your position in relation to everybody else's. And then learn how your position differs from everybody else's, what the differences are, what you need to learn, what you, what additional skills you ought to acquire to move up. And in between those, one of those skills will have to be social communication, interpersonal communication on a professional level, how professionals communicate. Otherwise, I mean, you could have all the technical knowledge, but if you're a fucking stiff, if you're, if, if, if you can't manage your personality, you will relegate yourself to the outskirts. You will be stunting your own growth. So, I mean, don't take the politics head on. Take your development head on first. Priorities, man. Look out for number one. The second comment here says, <clears throat> this may sound obvious, but have you made it clear to your manager that you want to move into a higher position and clearly stated your career aspirations? Question mark. They had me in the first half. The last half about clearly stating your career aspirations, I mean, that might be step two, right? That might be step two. Step one is going to be getting known, right? is going to be putting the news out there that you're interested in moving up. You want to learn what it takes to uh, be promoted, to earn more in compensation, to get the better, uh, to, to get the, the, the better company car, the better company accounts. That falls on you to take the initiative. I mean, if managers see that you're just super diligent and hardworking, but not really rocking the boat, they'll just stack all the boring accounts on you because like I met, like I said before, you're dependable. Why would they want to change you? Why would they want to change you out of your position if they can rely on you to take on all the boring grunt work because you're super diligent and hardworking? Again, I'm not, then I'm not discounting the fact that you're super diligent and hardworking, but I find that 
to be the keys where if you're just fo- if you were only focusing on those you're kind of painting yourself into a corner by not reaching out by not collaborating by not communicating and not networking you're painting yourself into a corner and and thereby stunting your own career growth continuing on this uh on this second comment I ask because I'm a manager and I've noticed people on my team never mention their career goals. Well, this person might be more more humanity, what is it? More humanistic than I am. I have to directly ask them where they want to go, what their goals are, and what they're doing to get there. I've told my boss that while I like my current position, I want to be sure I'm working on the appropriate things so I can move up again when ready. Yeah. Um, I actually ran a program like that working in a, um, in a pretty renowned company. I ran a a professional development program where similar to performance reviews, I mean, these weren't tied directly to compensation, but they were tied to promotions, right? So I would check in with my crew, with my, uh, with my employees, my subordinates, I would check in with them on a periodic basis and follow up with how their development was within the organization, what skills they knew, what skills they believed they needed to work on. So that way we can schedule, we could schedule around their aptitudes, their capabilities in order to have them work and improve and cross train even and learn something completely new. If that is what interested them in order to, Later in the future, submit them as candidates for promotion. Submit their profiles as candidates for promotion. Highly successful. Um, I, I don't know if it was continued after I left the organization because, funny enough, I actually started it when I uh, got into a position. What I, when I moved up into a position high enough to be able to manage the development program. I mean, I had fun doing it because as a social researcher, it was right up my alley, learning about personal and professional interests and how to facilitate that growth, that development. I knew that if I helped my people improve, my company would improve. And in turn, I would improve in the face of my manager, in the face of my company. Uh, Continuing, the second comment continues. It says, also... It's unfortunate, but a lot of times you have to show you can do the new role because – oh, before you're promoted. Um, before you're promoted, I don't know if you ought to show you can do it just out the cuts. Obviously, there has to be some training that goes into it beforehand, but showing the interest, showing the interest in how it's done, showing the interest in – having a little technical knowledge on how it's done. You don't need to have direct experience. Though what this manager says is right. It's it's correct to some extent. You don't have to um, like leave your workstation and go to somebody else's workstation and be like, look at me, I can do this job too. Fucking promote me, right? No, like you just have to express the interest. Go to your manager express the interest that you are interested, that you've seen how the work is done and you're interested in it for some technical or particular reason for it because it'll aid it'll aid you in developing professionally and, and, and growing your your technical skill. It'll put you face to face handling the client and uh, and you and you aspire, I guess, in that way you could fold in your aspirations and you aspire to be a better communicator, a better salesperson uh, with the client, learning how to service the clients better and bring the company more business, a better reputation, an improved image, that sort of thing. You have to show you have to show the interest. It's the interest that comes first. It says it's also unfortunate. You've got to show that you're going to do the new role before you're promoted. I'd recommend find out exactly what is expected of the position you want. Then keep concrete examples of how you achieve those metrics. Tell your boss and show the data. Either they'll work with you to get where you want to be 
or you'll confirm they aren't invested in your growth and you can move on. I think this person comes from a very, this, this commenter comes from a very unique perspective, brings a very unique perspective as a manager. Obviously, there are fewer managers than there are subordinates. You know, everybody wants to be the chief. Nobody wants to be an Indian, but obviously there's less chiefs than Indians. So having a manager in this thread here, I think is a great, a wonderful perspective. And they bring a lot of truth, a lot of truth in the sense that tying up the company's interest with your personal interest, and I do mean tying it up, will confirm for you whether or not the company is invested in you growing as the company grows or let you know if the company has you there only at their service. And then they in turn are not servicing you by helping you grow, by promoting you, by paying you more, by training you, by by providing you with additional resources like the knowledge, the tools, the know-how, the, 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 the technical expertise to move up. That's how you'll know. And as a manager, I can attest that most everything that this commenter wrote is the truth. It is the truth. You have to know what it takes to move up. You don't necessarily have to know how to do it, right? Now, you might, again, that's all dependent on context. If I had the client in front of me, I would ask them whether or not the organizational span of control lends itself to you, you know, meandering over to the next, to the next rung up, to the higher rung, to the next higher rung and finding out whether or not you can do the job. Hey, do you mind if I take the controls for a little bit? Now, that might require you becoming chummy with the person in that current position, which, again, implicates office politics in a sense. And if you, if you don't know how to navigate interpersonal communication, then you will, always, you will always look at human relationship as political. And in that case, my friend, you are painting yourself into a corner you are painting up your shoe, up your leg, up your stomach, and into your fucking mouth. <laughs> You're killing your own career, bro. As career suicide. Anyways, have yourselves a great week end. Oh yeah, that's right. Today's Saturday. Have a great weekend. And I mean, do 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 some work. Do some refining this weekend. So on Monday, you can get back at it. That's if you have the weekend off. Take care. And I mean, there aren't really any days off. It's entry level forever out here, even in the next position up. Take care.